Hello, and welcome back to more Starway of Spooktacular. I'm Devin, with me is David. Greetings. And we're continuing on with the Miskatonic. Has everyone figured out there's a tentacle theme yet? Oh yeah, everything has tentacles. That's Elder Tor in a nutshell. Yeah, but why tentacles? Because why not? Because they're creepy. That's exactly why. <laughs> oh, so it has to have lots of eyes, tentacles, and mouths. That's Eldritch Horror in a nutshell. <laughs> so the ultimate Eldritch Holder is a Beholder? Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Those worm things act like your arms. That's pretty groovy. Yeah. The thing to remember about all these like, cult shenanigans is that most of these monsters are just... Really ugly animals, and animals can be trained. <laughs> cool. How'd you train them? What? <laughs> Traditional combination of treats and mild punishment. As a treat, I let them keep my arms. As a punishment, I headbutt the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> like with your own head, or do you just slam them against a wall? Because the wall sounds more effective. Now they never leave mom's side. Don't ever have to command them to, for the easy stuff. What counts as easy stuff when training floating worms to act as replacement arms? Oh yeah, cooking, cleaning, game change, all the essentials. <laughs> you just see me when I play the trombone. Okay, now I'm just beating an ass. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> Easy my ass. <laughs> Marl Nikovich. I cannot say this. Marlon Nikovich Merogunian. Thank you. <laughs> you. That just rolled off the tongue with you. <laughs> I may have yeah. fucked up the last name, but. <laughs> yeah. Familiar with these types of names? And they come up a lot in Lovecraftian stuff. Oh, so that's the thing. Right? Yeah. Now, some of the benefits to having every internal organ replaced by half sentient liquid slurry. For example, you would believe how much of your brain is dedicated to simply maintaining the automatic processes of your body. With the slime, my brain is now free to fully ponder the questions of the universe. Oh, God, admit, you put a good spin on this. Still having to carry a handkerchief around to mop the incorrigible slum out of my eye sockets as a drawback. Look at Haiji. You are the Miskatonic. If you're only trailing black slime, you'll practically clean the place up. Nothing gets in the cult scientist, Dan, I guess. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Though, wouldn't his brain also be replaced with by the goo? Obey the goo! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what's with folks changing their names for our, the board game people are talking about? It's to make the consequences of the game seem more real. A lot of people need an escape from work or their studies, and the game is a good way to do that. Huh, you think I can play with you guys when I've got time off or whatever? Depends what your in-game name gonna be. Hmm. Thrust powerful. Badass barbarian. Saving sick wedges or whatever. Hmm. Nope. Bye. Oh! Better than everyone else's dumbass names. <laughs> whatever. Who wanna play a game where Thrust Powerful, the badass barbarian, says non canning in any way? I'll show you. I'll make the best ass barbarian. I know what I'm making now in D and D. Frost powerful. Yeah. And then their teammate Thunder McFisterton. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Oh, that'd be a monk. <laughs> Thunder McFisterton. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Good afternoon, Charlotte. Are you ready for your first assignment? Sure, lay it on me. Excellent. The Miskatonic has small research outposts located all over the world, dedicated to collecting and relating occult data back to the university. 
Vail Radio. One such outpost is in New Orleans, where you're the guy. <sighs> okay, what happened in New Orleans? We're not sure. Our researcher is supposed to relay daily radio messages back to us, but hasn't checked in for several days. Your task is to go to the outpost and knock on the door. That it? Yes. If he is there, ask why he hasn't been relaying data. If he's not, return and tell us. Okay, so confirm he's alive. Find out why he's not doing his job. Otherwise, assume he's dead and come back. Got it. That's it. Knock on the door. Exactly. Under no circumstances are you to enter the outpost. Oh, I'm definitely going to enter the outpost. Yeah. Just knock. And leave. Okay, how... Um, okay, so how do I get there? Oh, right. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, do never go in the outpost. There's nothing incriminating in there at all. <laughs> yeah. Can't stress that enough. Do not enter the outpost. Ah, right. <laughs> oh, crap, Johnny. So after a few, well, disasters, the government demanded that the Miskatonic experiments be completely sealed off from the outside world. As a result, every outpost in the country is interconnected by these tunnels. Help stops transporting creatures right up into the wilderness, see? Spooky. So I'm walking to New Orleans? Oh, no, of course not. You have a driver. Hey! Oh, boy! I love her little car. <laughs> I like, yeah, it's like a small, tiny car. Yeah. Oh, God. Aw, uh, hey, Lizzie. Looks like you're driving down these spooky-ass tunnel systems together. Yes, New Orleans is not too far in straight lines. Should be get there lickety split. Have fun, you two, and remember. Don't go into the outposts. Okay, see you later, later Johnny. Forbidden. Boo. <laughs> Guess this is the place. They need a better transition. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's weird. The door's open. So? Well, the mission is to knock on the doors, see if anyone's in, and then leave if the door's open. And leave. If the door's open, something bad might have happened. Like what? <laughs> I don't know. Anything. Maybe they're out of banana bread. Maybe someone's pregnant and they've gone to get a doctor. Maybe Cthulhu cultists have invaded to have a sick home hoedown. Maybe they're pregnant with a Cthulhu cultist banana bread baby. It is all or nothing in between. Yeah. <laughs> we should check it out. Why? Supposed to be aphromorized to go <laughs> into outpost. Done witches and witches are for knocking on doors, not parking around outposts. Come on, we'll be, you know, show an initiative. They'll be like, wow, Lizzie and Charlotte, you sure saved the day of poking around in that outpost. Good thing you did, or all the chupacabras would go back to the home base and eat all of us. You're an idiot. I don't think that's what they'll say. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take a look anyway. Feel free to join me if you want to save the university from chupacabras. Bye. <laughs> Guess it'll be okay if we just look. Yeah. Don't, don't tell me not to have fun. Fear the goo. <laughs> There's so many ways to take that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I better sweep this whole room before we move on. That's the detective thing to do. No, it's not. <laughs> Shut! <laughs> huh. Fear the goo. Written in goo. What good goo should I be fearing? Should I fear the goo the fear the goo sign is written in? Maybe it's peanut butter. Humans are, are uh, lolly. Allergic. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard one. I know, it's amusing right. how she says it. Yeah. He was allergic, right? 
Only the ones who hate deliciousness. Hmm, nope, I think it's a warning about the same goods we're in there. Can't be that dangerous then if the warner preferred using it over, you know, a pen. Maybe he has no pen. Maybe the pen is goo. Maybe he's just the goo. Maybe that's why he was so afraid. Because of pen goo. That was yeah. a horrible penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there's only one way to find out. Let's keep going. Let's hope there's no nightmare-inducing walruses in here. Hello, if you're a nightmare-inducing walrus, you gotta tell me. <laughs> God damn it. Right. So the only thing you really do in these rooms is click on the circles. Okay. That works for me. <laughs> yeah, you get a day off. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of goo. Watch out for the goo. You think the extraction facility has something suspicious about it with the goo bottles around it? Maybe. Hmm. Shit balls. The door's locked. So. So there might be goodies inside. Elder's goodies. Look, it says there, extraction facility. This must be where they were getting the goo. <laughs> we gotta get in there. I like how she went from investigating the goo to I want the goo. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because if someone tells me to fear something, I like to know exactly where that something comes from and how to punch whoever made it in the head. Whoops, some ass. Besides, it sounds exactly like something that the hottest new cult detective team in New Orleans would do, right? Solving some sick mysteries. Okay. <laughs> I love Lizzie. She's my favorite character in anything. Yeah. Oh, just so easy to convince. Yeah. She is literally like Gur, but like a little bit smarter. Yeah. And so just less a kid. Cute. <laughs> what? So just a kid. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I like doing crazy shit. Yeah. Okay, you convinced me. You only have to say like five more words. Yeah. Come on. All right. <laughs> Looks like a syringe. That's a beefy ass needle hole thing, too. This goo is either going into something or coming out of something. Either way, it looked like it would hurt like hell. <laughs> that was a long needle thing, too. <laughs> yes, we're. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, that's no, it's like the little text in the bottom. Yeah. Looks like the poster of Innsmouth, home of the Deep Ones. Maybe this is where whoever lived here was from. Is this with a good guy? <laughs> That's a deep one. They were this race of fishy, froggy folk that lived in the this underwater city off the coast of Innsmouth. In exchange for plentiful fishing and crabbing seasons, they would mate with the local Innsmouth babes and create little baby hybrids. Apparently it was a pretty sweet deal, until some wandering douche came from the town and ruined it. Came through the town and ruined it. When it told the government, they torpedoed the underwater city and ran everyone up and sent them to the concentration camps or whatnot. That sounds familiar, except for the concentration camps. Yeah. Well, that's actually how the story of Innsmouth ends. Oh. Yeah. Wait, they actually put them in concentration camps? No, that's all made up. Oh, okay. It's just some uh, investigator finds out about the Innsmouth and then goes and tells the government. And they just... Blow it to hell? No, that that's where the story cuts off. Oh. We don't know exactly what happens after he tell he gets out of there. Alright, I guess we know now. Yeah. According to the Miskatonic. Yeah. Kinda sad really. I heard the little hybrid tables are adorable. There were a lot of small number of personal effects on site. Easier just to let them have their little trinkets. Than to enforce contraband rules and the occasional knife in the gut for a supervisor was seen as an affordable expense. <laughs> I like that description. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Some sort of manifesto. April 9th, half a gallon. His name was Daniel. You stepped on him a while ago. Oh my god! <laughs> April 10th, two gallons. Told me to give her locket to her lover. April 11th, one gallon. He was still alive. What have I done? 
You. That's what you did. And then <laughs> it stops. Huh. We're turning people into goo. Oh, it looks like a diary. Each night, my darling life, hidden deep in the back room of the Orlandian brothel, prays to her goddess Shepnagurath. Even the faith, groovy. <laughs> that we might find a new home, that I might find work much less dreadful. She is becoming too large, too convincingly lie that she is carrying a human child. So, we must gather our pennies and leave soon. Ah, huh, there's a little feather. Ah, uh, that's a deep one, family. <laughs> oh, look at her. So pretty, so full of tadpoles. Yeah, you can see them moving around in there. <laughs> and he's kind of handsome in that, you know, anthropomorphous way. Ah. Why is that ah? Why is that not you? <laughs> All the storybooks say that there's no purer love than that between a girl and a frog. Which storybooks? I would like to know. <laughs> you know, the princess and the frog. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, I forgot one means several. <laughs> <laughs> I could not think of any other ones. <laughs> exactly, that was my point. <laughs> I'm just surprised I had one on hand ready to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> April 12th, 1936. Hey, that's yesterday. Well, that's today! <laughs> <laughs> A new prisoner has delivered, was delivered for goo extraction. He claims he was a riverboat captain with a ship that sails up and down the Mississippi River. He claims that there is a deep one refugee situated in Minnesota, wherein my people live and thrive, hidden from the university's horrific testing and the government's terrible camps. I shall rescue my beloved tonight under cover of darkness, and we three shall make for Minnesota. I'll miss the radio call in, and they'll send someone to investigate my squalid concrete prison. But we shall be long gone. Ha, huh, looks like the university was keeping this feller against his will. Using him to extract goo from out, folks. But why? Oh my god, they're destroying the deep ones. Maybe we should ask him. <laughs> no way, if the university had... The university is as evil as this guy says they are. We best keep our mouth shut and do a little independent investigation. We gotta find out what this goo is. What they're using it for, and why they're being such bastards. Well, she knows the floor pretty well. Yeah. Not for holding delicious pastries. <laughs> Thanks for stuff. telling me. Yeah. Every outpost, no matter how small, no matter how, or no matter what it research has, had to have had a holding cell. The topics we study at the Miskatonic have an alarming rate of con. Contagion. <laughs> well, first day in the job, I found out my, the place I work at is a bunch of assholes. Oh, well, no Thursday. <laughs> yeah, that's me at the call center. <laughs> yeah. Fucking shit on my dick. <laughs> Another goddamn locked door. Yeah, it's almost like you're in a survival horror. Yeah, so I'm locking Charlotte. <laughs> you look angrier than you should be. Sorry, the concept of, you know, privacy makes witches a little testy. Oh, does it now? No. <laughs> Whatever, let's find ourselves some keys and F this lock. This locks up. No one tells me where I can't, can't go. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> the wee ones could be manipulated in ways humans couldn't. They had what the brains call a differ, deeper, deeper emotional, emotional intelligence, intelligence than us. They could would cry at the simple concept of tragedy, so too friend them with their own was viciously effective. Yeah, never knew that about the deep ones. Me either. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Say what? Are those super rare dead Randy monogramming art covers? How did he get these? These are like ultra banned all across America. 
Mm-hmm. I gotta, we gotta take these. Holy shit, they're rare! <laughs> what? <laughs> Dead Randy, the sexy, sexy necromancer, is this cute little incubus that runs around saving zombie girls after the world ends. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's a plot of something. <laughs> and then boning them. The story was written by my first cousin, dead mother, Agnes G. Williker. <laughs> G. Williker. G. Williker. <laughs> it's a story of how this succubus girl, this purple girl here, wants dead Randy all to herself. But while they're all mutual, dead Randy gets sad that he's not boning mad dance. But him and the succubus girl learn that love should be shared with everyone, not saved for individuals. Yeah, she learned this from, like, this story from the Orient called Auntie. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> Why are humans being it? Sex. Oh, same reason the Dan ever thing. Folks are getting too cheerful. <laughs> Promoting cultist ideology, they said. Not sure how love everyone you can and don't be a douche is considered the same as, you know, let's get Cthulhu to F up the world, but whatever. Yeah. What okay. kind what would a cult do that's evil? Plus, I guess Dead Randy's pretty rampant in these series. How do you get that love everyone message across in the story about a nymphomaniacal blue midget without getting, you know, vigorous? Oh, they're just racist. <laughs> but the message was so awesome. Completely true to our cult's mantra. And everyone in the Chesnook Cook thought us witches were pretty groovy after these stories came out. Preach love and compassion and for the universe offers neither. They put that on as our town motto after Miss Agnes wrote these series. Come on, we gotta have the hard copy somewhere. The girls in the cover will shit their minds when they hear what I found. Can't help but feel like you're kind of biased here. I also can't help but feel you lost the plot somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Lizzie knows. <laughs> yeah, Lizzie's just like, I'm just going to keep shutting up. The more I talk, the more she fucking keeps going. Yeah, the more <laughs> stupid she'll get. I need her to get the focus up. <laughs> so, we'll have to call it here. If you're more interested, let us know. We'll continue on, but... Until next time, have a good one, guys. Buy the game. I mean, see your neighbors. Actually, this is, I think this is still on Steam, and it's very cheap if you guys want to check it out yourselves. Buy it! <laughs> We're not promoting it or anything. No, just a suggestion. <laughs> All right, have a good one, guys.